Hello everyone. So in this episode, we're going to use our uh, methods, tools that we developed uh, in, in our previous uh, episodes and then uh, define the concept of rationalizable strategies and uh, uh, iterated elimination of strictly dominated strategies um, to solve the games. Well, by solving games, we mean sort of predicting how rational players should be playing a game. All right, so that's the idea. So, and the idea is actually pretty simple. Uh, for any given game, you, you can apply it to a, a, fi you know, a, a finite or infinite uh, game, you know, more than two players or two players. It really doesn't matter whether it's a static game or dynamic game. It really doesn't matter. The idea is the following. Search for the strictly dominated strategies of a player. And then, so what's the idea of strictly dominated strategy? Uh, so for this player, there's another strategy which always gives him or her higher, strictly higher payoff. So that means the player, a rational player, the player who is actually aiming to maximize his or her payoff, should never play a dominated strategy. So basically, uh, you know, the player can ignore that strategy and, and treat the game as if that strategy never existed. And remember, because the game is... Uh, the game form, the game structure is common knowledge. All the other players should also ignore that strategy of this player. All right, and so that means uh, find and look for strictly dominated strategies of each player, eliminate them, and then look at the reduced game. Within this reduced game, now there might be other strategies that are uh, that were originally not strictly dominated, but now they are dominated. And so now eliminate those because, you know, in this reduced form game, uh, the players, again, will never play a strictly dominated strategy. So if you iterate this idea and iterate the elimination of strictly dominated strategies, at the end, you're going to come up with, you know, either one or maybe more than one strategy for each player. And so all those remaining strategies or all the strategies that survive iterated elimination of dominated strategies, we call them rationalizable strategies. Okay, so that's, that's the idea. So let's, you know, give a specific example. So I have one here and uh, in later uh, videos, I'm going to talk about more complicated examples when the strategies are not finite, but infinite. But just to uh, make sure that we are clear with the concept, consider this simpler form. So these are the payoffs. Mm -hmm. Two and two. All right. So player one is going to look at this game and he's going to see that if he plays A, he's going to get four or one or one or four, one or two. So there is no clear... Uh, strict domination between A and B. Well, however, the player two, when he looks at this game, he's going to see the following. Um, look, he's going to compare X with the Z. And, you know, playing X always leads to lower payoff than playing Z because X is strictly dominated by Z, right? This 3-0 combination is worse than 4-2 combination. If you look at, you know, row by row, 4 is higher than 3, 2 is higher than 0. So therefore, Z is a better strategy than X because whatever your opponent does, you know, you will always benefit uh, at least one unit of payoff or maybe two units of payoff if you play Z instead of X. So then the question is, what is the point for you to play X? So that means player two should never play X. All right. Um, so I basically uh, uh, ignore it. Um, initially, well, not initially. Remember, this game structure is common knowledge between these players, meaning player one also knows that player two should never play X because, you know, there's a better option for him to play. So therefore, uh, in his mind, player one should also ignore this action, this strategy. So what does that mean? That means the rational players should actually look at this game and not see those payoff, but should see 
this instead. A, B. All right? So, unfortunately, uh, a lot of the times, you know, in the experimental evidence shows that players do not really do uh, this sort of iterative thinking. Uh, not all players, I mean, not all people do that. Uh, but this is why we sort of assume that our rational agents are able to or capable of doing sort of complicated calculations. All right, so, uh, so, so that iteration is, again, uh, not maybe intuitive, uh, but what we say is that, well, if these guys, if these players are sort of rational and if they're experienced players, they should iteratively think about this and so eliminate this game and, and, and sort of uh, behave uh, in this game and in the previous game similarly. Okay. So once again here, uh, if you remember in the previous table, player one had no strict domination, but now he actually does have strict domination, right? Uh, because if he plays A, he's gonna get one or one, meaning he's gonna get one for sure. But if he plays B, he's gonna get either four or two. I mean, he's gonna always get something better than uh, what he gets if he plays A. So that means, Playing A should really, shouldn't be an option for A, I mean, player one, because there is a better option, all right? So therefore, when these two guys look at this game, uh, again, by the way, because this game is a common knowledge, the second player also sees that A is strictly dominated uh, for player one, and so he should also eliminate that strategy for player one. And that means when these two guys are looking at this game, this is what they should see. I'm sorry for those blue uh, terms, X and Y. Okay. And was it? Yeah. Uh, no, Y and Z, I guess. I'm sorry. Um, yep. Y and Z. This is Y. This is Z. I shouldn't change the name of the strategies. And then here, the rest is easy, right? Uh, because for player two, uh, clearly Z is better than Y because Y is going to give him one payoff, Z is going to give him two payoff. So that means he shouldn't really play uh, Y. So you see what I mean? So every step we eliminate at least one guy's uh, strictly dominated strategy and then look at the reduced uh, set of strategies or the reduced game and then continue eliminate, continue finding strictly dominated strategies and eliminate them. And then in this game, uh, things were perfectly solvable, and so this is uh, B, this is Z, so it means uh, for these guys, uh, there's only one uh, rationalizable strategy for player one, which is B, so I'm going to denote rationalizable strategy for player one as, uh, as R1, and rationalizable strategy for player two as R2, so it's uh, B and Z, okay? So that's the idea. Now let's uh, move on to another example. So here is the game again, two player. Once again, we can apply this idea to more than two players, more than two, three actions. Um, so I'm gonna call them A, B, C again, X, Y, Z. So this is four, two, um, two, 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 six, three, eight, minus one, zero, minus one, eight, zero, zero, two, ten, one, ten. I hope I did not make any mistake while sort of looking at those numbers. Okay, so here, let's see what we have. Uh, let's look at the first player. Is there any strict domination? Um, not really. I mean, the player one has four here, but you know, this minus one is, 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 is standing there terribly. Um, so I can't really eliminate that. Um, what else? Um, between BC is like two, two, so I can't really eliminate that. I can't, so there's no strict domination between uh, A, B, and C for player one. Well, what about for player two? So X, Y, Z, so again, so I have zero here, eight here, so the eight is like very good, but you know, the zero here. Uh, so here, this is 
I mean, for those, I am making a, a, a sort of a general look. This is 110, right? So for those who are not experienced in what to look, you can always make a, a binary comparison. A and B, for example. Is there any uh, strict dominance here? Uh, well, A seems like better than B. Uh, well, they're, they're giving the same payoff. And so I can't conclude A is better than B or B is better than A. So AB comparison fails. What about AC comparison? Well, A seems better than C, but you know here it's C is better than A. So therefore AC comparison fails as well. There's no strict domination. And then there's a third option, BC, right? Um, is there any strict dominance? Well, uh, B and C giving exactly the same payoff. So you know what? There's no strictly dominated strategy for player one. As simple as this. At least in pure strategy. Uh, th there is no pure strategy dominating a, a, another pure strategy. Maybe a mixed strategy uh, dominates a pure strategy. That, that might be the case. This is what I'm going to look next. But first, let's look at the simplest possible strict dominations, right? The pure strategy dominating pure strategy. So here, uh, the comparison X and Y. Uh, so Y seems better, but because of 0 and 2, X, is, uh, X seems better. So there's no strict domination. What about X and Z? 2 is better than 0, but 2 is not better than 10. So there's no strict domination between X and Z. Meaning, sometimes X is better, sometimes Z is better. What about Y, Z? 8 is better, 0 is worse. So again, there's no strict uh, domination. Okay, so... Well, what's the, what's the problem? Well, what I do see, however, is that a mixed strategy of Y, Z strictly dominates X. So X is actually strictly dominated, but it's dominated by a mixed strategy. What is that mixed strategy? I don't know if you can see it, but look, this is eight, this is zero. A combination of these two, remember a combination, I mean a mix of Y and Z, like one health, one health, for example, is gonna give me a convex combination of eight and zero. So for example, if it is one health, one health, it's gonna be exactly four higher than two. If it is, again, one health, one health, the combination is gonna be five higher than two. And the combination of eight and 10 will always be higher than six. So you know what, a mix, strategy, uh, for example, uh, zero probability X, one half probability Y, one half probability Z, uh, strictly dominates X for player two, for player two. I mean, X is a strictly dominated strategy because I found one strategy of player two that that gives higher payoff regardless of the uh, the, the the first player's uh, strategy. So you know what? This X should not be played. Again, here's the problem with uh, players who are computationally not perfect. Uh, I mean, when you look at this game for the very first time, and if you have just, I don't know, a few minutes to think about it, uh, you may not see that this, 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 this mixed strategy strictly dominating a pure strategy uh, sort of obviously. It's not obvious, I mean. Uh, it requires some sort of calculation. Uh, and again, if the players are not perfectly able to calculate those type of uh, payoffs, well, they're not going to be able to see that strict domination. Uh, so this is a behavioral bias, or not bias, but behavioral imperfection. But again, we assume that our, our uh, players are perfectly capable of uh, making all the calculations uh, necessary. So, so X should be out of the picture for player two. And player one, because the game is common knowledge, knows that X should be out of the picture. Now, maybe it's time to go back to the player one and see if there is a strictly dominated strategy in pure strategies, because now, you know, one strategy is off the picture. So the payoff structure is sort of changed. So here, when I look at it, I can see that A is strictly dominated. Why is that so? Because minus one is worse than three. Zero is worse than one. So playing C always will give this first guy better payoff than playing A. So therefore, player one should eliminate A because there's a better alternative. Play it. 
all right? So once again, player one will not worry about this two and this four. Why is that so? Well, because he knows that this scenario where player two is playing X will never happen. How can he be sure about it? Well, because he knows that his opponent is rational, he's able to make calculations, and X is worse than playing some mixture between Y and Z, all right? And so his opponent will never, should never play X, and so he should never worry about this four versus two comparison, okay? So once he eliminated this A, well, maybe now it's, I mean, you can still look at player one, but it's sort of wiser to look at the second player because his payoff structure has changed. So um, clearly Z is now better than Y, right? Because zero is worse than 10, eight is worse than 10. So now Y is not gonna be played by the second player. And then all we have is, you know, the player two is gonna play Z for sure. So therefore, the set of rationalizable strategies for player two is uh, Z, nothing else. What about R1? Well, R1 is, well, he has B or C. A is clearly out of picture, but you know, once the game is reduced to these two available actions, well, it's obvious, right? If you play B, you're gonna get two. If you play C, you're gonna get one. Again, you don't, you shouldn't really worry about those other payoffs because you know this iterative thinking uh, should be eliminating all those uh, strategies. So therefore, uh, you should be, as a player one, you should be playing B. So therefore, B is the only rationalizable strategy for player one, and Z is the only rationalizable strategy for player two, which means, uh, you know, our prediction as a game theorist, my prediction that if two rational guys who have no calculation, uh, you know, uh, no problem with the capacity of calculating, uh, you know, the payoffs, should actually end up playing B and Z and get the payoff tooth and not something else. Uh, this is sort of my prediction. Uh, all right, and so this is how we find rationalizable strategies and how we sorry, apply the idea of iterated elimination of uh, strictly dominated strategies. You may think of, well, what if I apply this idea of iteration to weakly dominated strategies? Can I still, you know, get some conclusion? Yes, you can. But the thing is, we don't really use it as a solution concept. And as I previously said, there's there are reasons for this. One of them is that, uh, so here, when you do the strict uh, elimination of, iterated elimination of strictly dominated strategies, it really doesn't matter from which player you start eliminating, all right? I mean, maybe the first player has a strictly dominated strategy and player two has a strictly dominated uh, strategy. So which player should I start eliminating? The order of elimination, so let's write it this way, order of elimination, doesn't matter. Okay, what does that mean? Um, that means the following. If you, um, I mean, for player one, I don't think there was a mixed strategy dominating the pure strategy, but if there was, uh, whether you start player one first and then go player two and then player one again and then player two, or you eliminate player one strategy, another strategy, and then go to player two, eliminate, you know, three strategies, and then go back to player one. Um, so the order doesn't matter, all right? Meaning the outcome, the rationalizable strategies at the end will always be the same, okay? However, if you do this elimination for weakly dominated strategies, the order of elimination will matter. All right, the outcome will be different. Okay, so here's the example where I'm gonna use the idea of iterated elimination of weakly dominated strategies and show that uh, the order of elimination in this case may matter. So here, uh, you know, b b both are, you know, the, the two games are exactly the same, same payoffs, everything is the same. Um, so I'm going to uh, use different orders and will reach to different outcomes. Okay, so here, uh, let's see. Well, first of all, 
I'm going to say that Z is a strictly domi uh, I'm sorry, weakly dominated strategy, right? Uh, because Y is giving exactly the same payoff as Z here, but sometimes strictly higher. So you know what? Z should be eliminated. Okay, very well. For the remaining game, what do I have? Well, I have this time B is, is a C is strictly dominated, uh, weakly, I'm sorry, dominated because 7 is strictly higher than 4 and 4 is equal to 4. So that means B is weakly better payoff. Okay, ignored. Well, then what I have is this square, right? In this square, I have, you know, Y is, is, is weakly better than X. So X shouldn't be played because I'm eliminating weakly dominated strategies. And then finally, A and B. B is clearly higher than A, so A shouldn't be played. And so the end, I end up basically saying the only rationalizable strategy here for player one is B. And the only rationalizable strategy for player two is Y. And so the, my prediction, the solution of the outcome is 4-3. Okay, well, however, here, let's sort of apply a different uh, idea. What is this? Well, first of all, uh, let's, let's eliminate um, what I have. Okay, so let's eliminate X, all right? So because uh, X is dominated by Y, clear? Uh, two is equal to two, zero is worse than three, one is worse than five, so X should never be played. Very well, what else? Well, now if you look at it, uh, B is worse than C for player one because four and four are equal, but five is higher than three. Because I'm eliminating weakly dominated strategy, B shouldn't be played. All right, very well. Now, what do I have? Well, I have the following. Here, Y and Z comparison, two and two the same, five and zero. So Y is weakly dominating Z, so Z shouldn't be played. And then finally, so therefore, the only rationalizable strategy for player two is Y. But what about rationalizable strategy for player one? Well, clearly it's A versus C and C is giving higher payoff. So A shouldn't be played. And so it's C. And the payoff here is four or five. So as you see in this game, <clears throat> Uh, the set of rationalizable strategies and, and the rationalizable strategies here are two different sets and the payoffs are also different. Well, I mean, the first player is getting exactly the same payoff, but the second player is getting a different payoff. So what does that mean or what, what does that suggest? Well, that suggests sort of the way you apply the methodology as a solution concept uh, leads to a different outcome. And so um, the, this, this notion of using iterated elimination of weakly dominated strategies as a solution concept is not really a reliable concept. So we don't really use it as a solution concept. Um, however, yes, we do use the idea of weakly dominated strategies, sometimes just to refine our solutions. Uh, but other than that, uh, whenever we have iterated elimination of dominated strategies, we mean strictly dominated strategies, and therefore rationalizable strategies are those that survives the iterated elimination of strictly dominated strategies. Okay, I hope those examples were clear. Later, as I said, I am going to solve more complicated examples.